Charles Seliger began to create organic images very early in his career. He was familiar with the writings of physicists and naturalist writers such as Henry David Thoreau and with psychoanalysts Sigmund Freud and Alfred Adler. With these interests, it is not surprising that he was drawn to the philosophy behind surrealism. Francis O'Connor notes in his book on Charles Seliger that the artist was less interested in the illusionist surrealism of artists like Salvador Dali, tending more toward artists whose work displayed a more organic abstraction. His images made very clear references to the natural world. Cross-sections of rock, soil, microorganisms, the internal structure of botanical and biological forms, and the geology of these various worlds. In a discussion about the artist, curator of American art for the Mint Museum of Art, Jonathan Stuhlman, talks about Charles Seliger's desire to paint these micro-worlds and insects. Charles, very early in his career, um, wrote a, nice, a really nice piece for one of his, uh, for the catalog of his first exhibition, where he talks about, um, I think the quote goes something like, I want to tear the skin from life and peering closely to paint what I see. I want my brain to become a magnifying lens um, for reality. And I, I think that's really what you're getting in, in those paintings, is, is him really looking intensely at, at his subject matter and, and really trying to get to know um, the elements of the natural world in that way. And, and um, what's interesting from that is that he moves from paintings like Cross-Section of Plant Life or Hidden Flower Under Earth, where he's really considering kind of a whole micro realm in, in, in his works, to works like um, Horned Beetle or Beetle Number no. One or Caterpillar with Sky, where um, you're still kind of getting this intense focus on elements from the natural world, but, you, he, but there he's, he's kind of narrowing his lens, so to speak, on one discrete object within the painting, and you can pretty clearly make out um, the form of the beetle or the caterpillar, but it's as if he's kind of tearing the skin almost from, from the form of those um, insects. To, to kind of look at their structure and, and what makes them tick. Charles Seliger was only 23 when Edward Root first purchased his paintings in 1949. In an interview with Paul Cummings for the Smithsonian Archives of American Art in 1968, Seliger talked about Edward Root. I made the acquaintance of a man I'd seen around, and I knew who he was, but I never talked to him. It was Edward Root. Edward Root was probably one of the most superior art collectors. I mean, just a remarkable, sensitive man. He followed your work with such devotion it was unbelievable. He had seen all my shows, and finally he was ready to buy. The invented microscopic subterranean views, cross-sections of plant life, and intricately detailed insects had great appeal for Root, who was drawn to what he called nature abstraction. These paintings reveal the influence on Seliger of the nature studies of the great 19th century French entomologist Jean-Henri Fabre, who wrote numerous books with titles such as The Life of the Fly, The Mason Wasps, The Glowworm and Other Beetles, and The Life of the Caterpillar. Regarding Edward Root's interest in his paintings, Seliger said, I had a whole period of insects. Mr. Root had some of them, and he used to call them my little beasties. <laughs> he was very pleased with them. Here, Jonathan Stuhlman discusses the depth of interest in nature that Edward Root and Charles Seliger shared. You know, in my reading about Root, thinking about his heightened awareness of the visual world because of his hearing problems, but to think about anyone who's interested in, in art and in collecting art obviously has a, a, an engagement with kind of an intense form of looking, but, but if you're even more dependent on your kind of visual senses to kind of drive your interactions with the world, you certainly have to look more intensely. And I think someone like Charles, I mean, that's a, it's a great kind of match it, um, with, with Root. Is, 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 you know, Charles is someone who's looking as intensely as any artist I've ever come across at, at, at the world around them. Um, I'm amazed he still has his eyesight, <laughs> actually.